Hi, my name is Karen Carr and this is my presentation for EDU 716. Acknowledgement to Country I acknowledge that the First Nations people are the traditional owners of this land and pay my respects to the Gabi Gabi Kabi Kabi people of the Sunshine Coast. I extend my gratitude for their caring of country for over 60,000 years and pay my respects to the Elders past, present and emerging. I respect their knowledge of country, wisdom and culture and recognise that this land was never ceded. I also acknowledge my ancestors from the Ngāpui tribe from New Zealand and extend my gratitude to Honi Heke, a past Ngāpui chief for the Treaty of Waitangi. I recognise that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people don't have a treaty and I ask that I may walk with them in their endeavours to obtain one. I identify as both an Australian and a Maori and growing up here in Australia I didn't realise that my culture was any different and in fact it was not until I got to high school that I started to notice there were a lot of differences between my culture and what we did at home and what my friends did at home. And this different, being different, caused me to be embarrassed about my Maori heritage and culture and for many years I rejected my culture and this hurt my family. I believe, however, that my own journey affords me with a deeper understanding of some of the issues and sensitivities that not only the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students would have, you know, in my classroom might have, but also students from other cultures and countries in the classroom and in the community. So I think initially a letter out to the parents, uh, telling them a little bit about myself because I can't expect to get to know them if I'm not willing to divulge some information about myself. So that's, that's the first thing I would do. Um, talking to the school's education community engagement officer uh, to reach out to the elders and aunties in the community and as well as the parents of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. 100% um, effort in that. I, I, need to make those connections because by connecting with them I'm helping my students and I'm becoming a teacher because I want to help my students. So 100% on board with making those connections and I will do what I need to do to be able to build those relationships. I think that um, encouraging the students in my classroom to celebrate their uniqueness, their culture um, and what makes them different. And one of the first projects I want to do is have students come in and share something about their culture. Um, something that they think is funny, something that they think is significant, um, but just, just one thing even, just share one thing. And that gets us all talking about our differences and it then gets us to get to know about each other and then we can have respect for each other's cultures. And I think it also helps comply with um, the Australian Teaching Standard of 2.4 of reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. Um, and it also helps us to start to learn about the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture, which is um, a teaching standard 1.4. Now, obviously, I don't expect the students to learn from um, just other students, and I'm not putting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students on the spot. It is everyone brings something to the table of what they want to share. And then from there, I will then teach the students about the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. Creative ideas, connections to the five E's and the eight ways of learning. I plan on engaging students through storytelling. Um, I think it's a great way for students to start to learn and there's so many books out there which really do align to the Australian curriculum. So I plan on using these books and others like these books to engage students in learning. Uh, another thing is reconstruct, deconstruct. You know, students can pull things apart and learn that way. It's, it's a great way for students to learn. Uh, things that you make at home that you can bring into the classroom that students can, can play with and look at and pull apart and gives them ideas for what they might be doing. And it's also a great way to assess them. You know, assessing them on something that they make is, is a much better way than just always a written piece because it can't always be a written assessment. Um, and a lot of times it shouldn't be because Students, we need to provide an education um, that is equitable um, as per the Alice Springs Agreement and we need to recognise that not all students start from the same platform. So, you know, being a teacher, you need to make sure that all students have a chance of succeeding. So assessments might need to be that you bring in something and show them something and, sh you know, show, show them this model and show them what you expect them to achieve, um, gives them a great idea and helps set them up for success. 
uh, and as a teacher that is my mission that I find a way to help all students to succeed. Thank you for listening.